Colorado High School Activities Association basketball is on 1010 KSIR and on the World Wide Web at KSIR.com. Tonight, from the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, it's a 3A boys basketball state quarterfinal. As the Brush Bee Diggers take on the Holy Family Tigers along with Jen Goodall, I'm John Beltran. First five games all saw the higher seed win so far that doesn't vote as well for the Bee Diggers, but every game is obviously its separate one as the Bee Diggers will be looking to win a state quarterfinal for the second straight year after knocking off Faith Christian last year. And the Bee Diggers are the only team, the only school on the boys' side with an opportunity to go to the 3A semifinals for the second straight year because neither Eaton, Ken Denver, or Pagosa Springs made it this far. Bee Diggers began the year at 4-4, four four, but now are sitting at 19-5, winners of 15 of their last 16 games, and taking on a Holy Family team, Jen, that is pretty much a mirror of the Bee Diggers' depth and athleticism. Well, and, and looking at the Holy Family warming up here, they have a little bit of a height advantage, I think. So the mirror part, that's the only advantage I think Holy Family has over us. I, I'm watching them shoot, and their guards through posts are dropping threes. So they are very much like us. Well, but we saw that when they played Aspen, they had a height advantage right. over Brush, and the Bee Diggers won the rebounding edge. So that's nothing new. Oh, the, no, that's it's whoever was going to work harder. I guess the question is how physical is Holy Family going to be because the Bee Diggers get right up in your face, but I have a feeling that Holy Family more than likely will do the same exact thing. Well, I, I would concur with that statement. I, I don't don't think that I've ever seen a Holy Family team that has not gotten up in the shorts or in the grill. All right, here's how the first five games went today in Class 3A. We started with a girls game on 105.7 KPMX where Sterling defeated Bishop Matchbuff 57-44, so the Sterling girls We'll play tomorrow at 4 o'clock on KPMX against the winner of tonight's 7 o'clock game, Pagosa Springs and Manitou Springs. And then the second game saw the four-seed Colorado Academy beat the fifth-seed Moffitt County 67-62. And Colorado Academy will take on the winner of tonight's 8.30 game, Faith Christian against Manitou Springs. That'll be tomorrow night at 8.30. As for the third game today, the four-seed Lamar Lady Savages defeated the fifth-seed Peak to Peak. 48-27, so they'll face the Holy Family girls, the top seed who moments ago dismantled the 19 Eaton, 52-30. And the other game today saw Colorado Springs Christian, the third seed on the boys' side, defeat Denver Science and Technology by 20, 69-49. So this is the sixth of eight games, and it's unfortunate because Holy Family's a 22-2 team. The B-Diggers have played extremely well, and it's almost a sense that this could be a state semifinal or final considering how good these teams are. Doesn't it seem like that every year, though? The the final game is usually... Anticlimactic. Now, last year yeah. that wasn't the case when well, Pagosa beat yeah. Denver in a close game, yeah. but you're right. A lot of the time you get to the state final, and it's, a, it's an earlier game that really mm -hmm. is the more championship type of contest. Well, and, and just knowing how the Beat Digger boys are having some of them in class today they seem relaxed they seem mentally ready they seem like they're on target so I think that it's not going to be one of those wake-up call games that we saw earlier this season I think that they got their heads on straight and they're ready to go the Holy Family was in this position last year and got blasted by Eaton in the quarterfinals the team that the Brush Boys defeated for third place and the Bee Diggers were like I mentioned in the same position a year ago and after beating Faith Christian by four points had that one bad quarter in which they were outscored 15-2 to in the second by Ken Denver, and Ken Denver never looked back, even though they lost that state championship game to Pagosa Springs. We'll have the uh, starting lineups coming up momentarily here from Clune Arena on the campus of Air Force Academy here in Colorado Springs, where the Bee Diggers are looking to become the first lower seed to win today as I mentioned the five higher seeds have won so far here today and Jen we were discussing on the way up you never know what happens this Holy Family's got two losses yet their two losses were to Jefferson Academy who is not in the final eight so we know as they say it's a cliche throw the records out the door right because Jefferson Academy everybody thought would be here they're not here so who knows who's going to win this game but the B-Diggers certainly, and so does Holy Family. They've got some obstacles to overcome 
facing the experience and the depth of the Bee Diggers, while the Bee Diggers have to face a Holy Family team that obviously has been here before and was here last year, didn't do as well, but they're back and certainly are building upon a very good 2012-2013 campaign here into 2013-2014. I wonder how many turnovers are going to be committed in this game because I figure with getting up in your face defensively for both teams, the, the ball pressure is going to be immense. Well, and I'm going to look for the backdoor plays. I mean, if you're playing severe ball pressure on both sides of the of the court, you're going to have backdoor cuts, you're going to have back screens, and you're going to have a lot of exciting plays, I think. All right, the starting lineups. Again, to be introduced momentarily. As the Bee Diggers are looking for their 20th win of the season, but more importantly, a berth in the 3-8 state semifinals. This matchup here against the Holy Family Tigers. Bee Diggers starting lineup brought to you by Blodorn Lumber, Blodorn Lumber at Fort Morgan. You can browse the virtual showroom, view the current sales, and complete a credit application. Check them out, BlodornLumber.com. Lodorn Lumber in Fort Morgan, one of the fine sponsors of Rush Bee Digger Sports. The Bee Diggers are the designated visiting team for head coach Ken Garcia. And they will be wearing their maroon uniforms, assisted by Tyrone Whipple and Court Marquez. This evening's session featuring quarterfinal competition in the class. The diggers will be going with Jake Brown, a senior along with Bryce Needens, Randy Baker, Jeffrey Dunker, and Jacob Nichols, all seniors. And the leading score, the two leading scores obviously will be starting here for Holy Family. That includes Luke Golter. Luke Golter averaging just over 12 points a game for Holy Family. And Golter's a 6'3 junior along with 6'2 senior David Summers. Chris Helbig, a 6'2 sophomore. Austin Brown, a 6'4 junior in the middle along with Devlin Granberg, a 6'3 senior. So all 6'2 or taller, that's the height disparity. Especially if you look at the Bee Digger side that Jen was talking about. Where the Bee Diggers with Brown who's a senior at 6'3", and Needens at 6'3", but Baker's at 5'11", Dunker at 6 foot, Nichols at 6'2", so not too bad of a matchup that Ken Garcia's got to start this game for Brush. Holy Family is coached by Pete Vileko, assisted by Mike Keith, Brad Golter, Kyle Neff, and Steven Scordos. I'd like to thank all of our listeners as well online at KSIR.com. Nice crowd here on the Bee Diggers side. As what they normally do for the first game that every team's involved in, they introduce the entire roster, then they get to the starting lineups. And I don't know how deep Holy Family goes. They've got a 12-man roster. We know the Bee Diggers have a deep roster, but they actually play as many as 10. And Ken Garcia will substitute players two or three minutes in. And it could be sooner or later in this particular game since we're not looking at one of the first 22 games of the season. The last three games have a set, the last two and then tonight have essentially been elimination games. So you pull the trigger early if you have to or you keep in successful players longer if you have to. Yeah, it just depends on what Holy Family is going to throw at the beat diggers. It's, it could be one of those games where they're both both teams are pressuring, both teams are going to be running gun, I have a feeling. So it depends on what the fatigue level is going to be for both teams. And i got to tell you, Jen, I think we enjoyed our time covering the 3A state championships at Mobile Arena in Fort Collins. And even though this is further away, I, I like this environment a little bit better. Oh, I love a college environment regardless. So this is this is right. I got yeah, goosebumps. I mean, I, mean, I, got nothing, goosebumps. I mean, nothing against Colorado State. There's a little nope, bit more nope. space here. Just a little bit. And, uh, yeah, they're both outstanding facilities, no doubt about it. But you're also on the campus of the Air Force Academy, and that gives you even more goosebumps. Yes. And a lot of the bee diggers have really... Uh, dropped a lot of weight on top of their heads, Jen. <laughs> yeah, I 
saw him in the hall the other day, and I was like, what is going on? Of course, Jeffrey Dunker is in my class as Jake Brown right off the top in the morning. So when I saw him walk in with their mohawk looks, I was like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, as the week went on, all of them, kind of all the seniors at least, got a new hairdo. All right, so the teams have been introduced. And this 3A state quarterfinal, the third of the four quarterfinals, will be getting underway. Again, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at KSIR Sports at B106 for quarter-by-quarter quarter updates. So if you happen to step away from the radio, quarter-by-quarter quarter updates once again on Facebook and Twitter. Opening tip brought to you by Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance. All model life and health, Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance. With locations in Fort Morgan and Brush. It'll be Jacob Nichols jumping center. For the Bee Diggers and for Holy Family, it'll be Austin Brown at 6-4. Holy Family crowd is being countered by the brush crowd here. All standing for this opening tip. And it is controlled by Holy Family. Chris Helbig with a basketball. Helbig on the outside right to Golter, their leading score. Golter with a basketball, dribbling at the top, back to Helbig. Helbig looking for Summers, back to Golter, behind that three-point line. Picked up by Dunker, dribbling right baseline. Baseball pass towards Summers. Knocked out of bounds by Randy Baker. Retaining possession is Holy Family. And to throw it in for the corner will be Chris Helbig. Well, and the beat diggers are starting off in a 2-3 zone. Helbig looking in the left corner for Summers. Picked up by Baker. Hands it back out to Helbig. Helbig against Baker, dribbling to his right. Picked up by Dunker, looking at the top, at the free throw line for Summers. Had the ball off his foot, gets it back out over there to Brown. On the outside right, Helbig with a basketball. He retreats towards the timeline. B-Diggers playing some tight defense so far. Golter looking down low. Golter at the top for Helbig. Helbig, bounce pass, free throw line. Granberg turns, shoots, scores. 15-footer for Devlin Granberg. Holy Family scores on their first possession. Here comes Needens the other way, just across the timeline. Looking, picks up his dribble, back out to Dunker. Guarded by Helbig. Dunker to his right. Dunker picks up the dribble. Then he traveled. Well, and Holy Family is elected to go into a man-to-man. -man. And on offense, Holy Family is just running the same thing that the girls we just watched run. They're running a little triangle offense, trying to get a high-low. They're trying to get a back screen for an open three on the offside. Here comes Holy Family the other way. On the outside left, Summers against Baker. Spins it back out to Helbig. Dribbling to his right. Gets a pick from Brown in the right corner. It's Golter. Back near the top is Summers. Back out to Summers. Off the pass from Brown. Three in the air is no good. And Bryce Needens has the rebound for the B-Diggers. Rush the other way. Long pass to Brown on the right baseline. Back out to Dunker. Dunker right in the lane. All the way. Scoops it up and he missed it. And the rebound controlled by Devlin Granberg of Holy Family. There is the outlet to Helbig. Helbig with a basketball in the left corner to Golter. Picked up by Brown. Dribbles to his right. Bounce pass to Helbig straight away. Dribbles by Dunker all the way. Scoops it up off the glass and in. For Chris Helbig, the B-Diggers did not defend that well. 4 to nothing, Holy Family, 6-12 to go in the opening quarter in this 3A state quarter final. Baker across the timeline, outside left to Needens, 3 in the air, barely made it to the rim. Nichols tries to chase it down, saves it in, but saves it into Devlin Granberg of Holy Family. The other way, Helbig at the free throw line. Outside, Golter, left wing 3 is good. And all of a sudden, just like that, Holy Family leads 7 to nothing. 5.48 to go in the opening quarter. B-Diggers just need a bucket. And they can get right back into this game. Baker on the outside right. Dribbles to his right. Towards the baseline. Bounce pass to Needens right baseline. Double team. Jump pass to Baker. Tries to slash his way in the lane. He's fouled. No shot was taken by Baker. But the foul was committed by David Summers. Well, in watching Holy Family play defense, they're playing a lot with their hands, not so much with their feet. So if we can use a little dribble drive and kick to have our, our boys moving on the outside to flash to the ball, that's going to be one of the things to get Holy Family into foul trouble. Bryce needs to throw it in three-quarters court. Brushed down by seven in the early going. Bounce pass to Baker. Baker on the outside right against Summers. Gets a pick. Double team. Picks up his dribble. Bounce pass to Garcia just into the game. Down low towards Rosenbrock who came in. Ball is batted away out of bounds by Granberg. And the V-Diggers retain possession. And to throw it in will be Austin Garcia. 
We played over two and a half minutes. Bee Diggers looking for their first point. Garcia looking down low. Right baseline to Baker. Dribbles the ball off his foot. It's loose in the floor. Rosenbrock goes diving for it. Kicks it back out towards the backcourt. Nevins tries to save it. He does, but it's thrown out of bounds. And Brush commits their second turnover. This is what you fear playing a number two seed. The Bee Diggers, a number seven seed, is when you take on a, a higher seed. You cannot let them get out to this big start. Here comes Helbig for Holy Family at the top. On the outside left of Brown. Brown straight away to Granberg. On the outside right with the basketball is Summers. Dribbling to his left, gets a pick. Into the lane. He fades, he shoots, he scores. David Summers, for Summers with his first points. Holy Family, has got four in the scoring column. Nine to nothing Tigers. 4.53 to go in the first. Needens with a basketball trap. Feeds it right corner. Three in the air is off the rim. Missed by Randy Baker. And the rebound controlled by Austin Brown. Here comes Helbig the other way. Right at the free throw line. Down low. Reverse layup. Summers up and in. Bee Diggers need a timeout. They'll take it. Brought to you by Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance. Home Auto Life and Health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. 8 4 2 55 4.38 to go in the opening quarter. Holy Family leads 11 to nothing. And this is an early nightmare for Brush. It is. I think that we did switch, Beat Diggers did switch to a man-to-man defense on the last one, which I think suits them better with this Holy Family team. However, they still have to have that communication, and they need to play the SAG defense that we've seen in the last three games where they're doing the little help defense. they got to come out. they got to hedge somebody that's going off of a pick in order to make them take a wider route to the basket. And head coach Ken Garcia has already made substitutions early as he had to do when that first unit was not getting it done. Holy Family hasn't made a substitution and they probably won't for a while because they are carving up the bee diggers with four different players in the scoring well, column I was, already. I was watching down low and Kyle Rosenbrock is already sent to the floor so that'll get him heated up a little bit and he's going to be a hard worker for them. Backcourt pressure being applied. The pass into Garcia against Helbig. Dribbles by him. Picks up the dribble now. Back out to Needham. Still in the backcourt. Front court pass to Baker. Baker left baseline all the way. He scoops it up and that's short and the ball is tipped around still tipped baker's got it for the b diggers baker left of the lane he's fouled and he's fouled over there by austin brown that is the second team foul committed by holy family and ryan willis will check in for devlin Brandberg. and i think if the b diggers can show that tenacity for the rebounds they're going to win that war garcia to throw it into the right of the basket left baseline rosenbrock 10 footer air ball with the basketball is Luke Golter for Holy Family. On the outlet, Summers in the right corner, overhead pass. Straight into lane is it's an offensive foul. That was Luke Golter who ran right over Kyle Rosenbrock. A Great pile job. of bodies in there. Great job of Kyle getting back into position on that. He was the trail man. Yeah, he made the shot on the uh, layup, but there was a mess down there. The offensive foul committed by Golter. Now, Golter and Summers, their two leading scorers, have committed one foul apiece, so if you can get them in foul trouble, work into that bench, you can rally from this 11-0 hole with 4.07 to go in the opening quarter. Garcia across the timeline, harassed over there by Willis, dribbling towards the top, and he's stripped over there by Golter. Golter by himself, lost the basketball, but got it back and laid it up and in. Bay Diggers have three turnovers and no points. 13-0 Holy Family, 3.49 to go in the opening quarter. Bounce pass to Baker in the front court. Outside left jump pass down low towards Garcia. And it's knocked out of bounds by Austin Brown. Bee Diggers retain possession. Holy Family is getting their hands on everything. As checking in are Alex Como and Nick Kruitzer. They check in for Holy Family. To throw it in for the Bee Diggers. Underneath the basket will be Garcia. Looking, still looking. Lobs it near the top to Needens. Needens dribbling. Cut off over there by Helbig. Bounce pass to Garcia all the way. Scoops it up and he threw up an air ball. But the ball's batted over to Randy Baker. He'll take a three. In and out. Kyle Rosenbrock has the rebound on the left baseline. Back out to Baker. Another three. Barely got to the rim. Ball is batted around. And that's into the hands of a Holy Family Tiger and Alex Como. And then we got a whistle and a foul in the backcourt. The B-Diggers right now frustrated in the opening quarter. Then Jacob Nichols committed the foul for Brush. Well, and they're not taking bad shots. Those are all open looks. They just aren't falling for them right now. Once that first one goes, I think that they'll relax and they'll start to play their game again. And to throw it in will be Como. We have played four minutes and 37 seconds, Holy Family, with a 13-0 lead here in this opening quarter of the 3A state quarterfinal. Como with a basketball guarded by Rosenbrock. 
looking, kicks it up straight away. Golter, three in the air, is off the back of the rim. Jacob Nichols has the rebound for the B Diggers. On the outlet to Baker. Baker across the timeline, swings it left side, poked away. Nichols got it. Left corner, Needens, three in the air, no good. And the rebound into the hands of Rosenbrock. Bounce pass is poked out of bounds over there by Nick Krutzer. And the B Diggers retain possession. Brush has grabbed six rebounds to Holy Family, five. Devlin Brandberg back into the game for Golter. David Summers took a brief rest. And you can tell that Holy Family's pretty deep. He's back into the game and Garcia to throw it in. Garcia to the left of the basket. Looking, looking. Lobs it on the outside right towards Baker. Knocked away. And it's intercepted by the Tigers. Four turnover for Brush. Long pass to Summers. Lays it up and he misses, but he's fouled hard. There were two beat diggers right there, including Nichols. It might be a second foul. Summers gets up slowly. Nope, instead it's Bryce Needens with his first foul. I'm telling you, Jen, this is getting tough to watch because the bead diggers, like you mentioned, they're not getting bad shots. They just are looking for that first one to fall, and the Summers free throw is off the back of the rim, and it falls through. Wow. Everything is falling for the Tigers right now. We just need to make sure that we're keeping our poise, not making silly fouls that get us into foul trouble, and let the game come to them. Holy Family with a two touchdown lead here, 14 to nothing. Second free throw for Summers is in the air, and that is a round and no good. Kyle Rosenbrock with his third rebound already. Rosenbrock in the backcourt to Garcia. Garcia across the timeline, picked up by Summers, behind his back, at the top, picks up the dribble, spins it back out to Trey Cranston into the game. Cranston outside left, Garcia, three in the air. Good for Austin Garcia. And the Bee Diggers with 2.36 to go in the opening quarter score. Their first points of the game, 14-3 Holy Family. On the outside right, Summers with a basketball. Gets a pick from Granberg. Picked up by Rosenbrock. Picks up the dribble. Looking for Como. Outside left. Left of the lane. Leans. Shoots. Throws up a brick. And Rosenbrock has his fourth rebound. Bee Diggers want to run. Rosenbrock across the timeline. On the outside left. Dribbling left baseline. He's fouled by Granberg along that left baseline. As the bodies go flying towards the floor. And Rosenbrock's going to lay it out all on the line, as are the other bead diggers, especially down by 11 here with 2.12 remaining in the opening quarter. AC Ice proudly supports all of us. Northeast Colorado and high school sports. AC Ice. Get it at any local grocery store, convenience store near you. Garcia to throw it in. Left corner, Needens. Fakes the three, steps in, puts up a 12 footer. Might have been partially blocked. The ball is volleyballed around, still loose in the floor. And we got a whistle and a travel. I don't know if Holy Family actually had possession of the ball, but the travel's called against the Tigers. I think at this point we'll take it. Well, yeah, nobody had possession of the ball, but traveling was called anyway. Well, but the rule is that when Holy Family started with possession, that stays with them until a loose ball or a change of possession happens, so it would be in their possession. Garcia to throw it in three-quarters court for Brush. Over to Cranson. Cranson with a basketball. Crossover dribble, had the ball stripped away by Como. Cranson tried to pick it back up, throws it over to... Ben Mickey into the game. Mickey at the top of the basketball. Outside right to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock takes a dribble. Inside, Cranston scoops it up, and he missed an easy one. He was wide open, didn't know it. Ryan Willis with a rebound for Holy Family. Bounce pass on the outside right for Granberg. Lost it, got it back. Overhead pass straight away. Three in the air is up and good, and that is made by Ryan Willis. Wide open three. Holy Family with a 17-3 lead. A minute and a half to go in the first. Needens is fouled in the front court. No offensive no. foul. He pushed off with the left hand as Willis went to the floor. Needens commits his second. The Bay Diggers with their fifth turnover. And Holy Family has the basketball with an even 90 seconds to go. It looked like Needens was contacted first. But that was the call made against the Bay Diggers. Here comes Holy Family. Brush has got to do something. they got to draw to within single digits. Probably sometime in the second quarter. Driving left baseline. Summers double team. Back out. Brown wide open three. That's a brick. Hit nothing but backboard. Austin Garcia has the rebound for the B Diggers. Garcia against Helbig behind his back. He looked like he was fouled. He was. And that'll be the 15th foul. The foul was committed by Chris Helbig as first. And the B Diggers trying to get aggressive and get back into this game. Trailing by 14 with 73 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Garcia to throw it in. Just beyond midcourt. Garcia to Cranson. Cranson against Helbig. Dribbles to his right. Cranson right of the lane. Scoops it down low to Mickey. And Mickey puts it up and he's fouled. Traveled. However, he nope, traveled. traveled. I don't know why he took that extra step. He had the defender in the air and for some reason should have gone straight up or taken a dribble and had the right. easy reverse layup. 
Instead, the Bee Diggers have their sixth turnover here in the opening quarter. Helbig the other way for Holy Family. Helbig with a basketball. Back out to Summers, guarded by Needham. So the outside left is Ryan Willis. Willis towards the top. Cross court to Helbig. Helbig against Rosenbrock on the outside left to Granberg. Behind the three-point line. Lobs it down low for Brown. Brown against Garcia. Turns, hooks, and scores off the glass. That was too easy. The height disparity was several inches. Holy Family now leading 19-13. to 13. 35 seconds to go opening quarter. Garcia with the basketball. Garcia into the front court. Picked up by Helbig. Left of the lane. Garcia jump pass to Needham's. Left corner three is blocked. And the ball is batted right into the hands of Ryan Willis. Then we got a whistle in the backcourt. And there's a foul committed by the Beat Diggers and Austin Garcia. Jen, the question is now, can the Beat Diggers recover? Because they've got one three in the game. They've got twice as many turnovers as points. And... We've well, only played seven and a half minutes of basketball. When you get into this situation, you just go back to fundamentals, and they might have to front the post and have that help defense on the backside if that's you know if they're going to use that height advantage like they have been. Summers the other way over to Granberg on the outside right, well behind that three point line is Luke Golcher. Golcher with a basketball. They're going to take the final shot of the opening quarter. Helbig looking up at the clock with six seconds to go. Crossover dribble, 16 footers off the glass. Are you kidding me? Holy mahungus! You've got to be kidding me. Branson throws it up, but after the buzzer, and that is the end of a nightmarish first quarter. Oh, my Lord, you're hitting a straightaway shot with no intention of banking it in. But Holy Family leads Brush after one, 21 to 3 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Make sure you pick up your official championship programs. They're complete with rosters and other information. John Beltran, Jen Goodall back from the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs in this 3A state quarterfinal. The Beat Diggers trail 21 to 3 as we head to the second quarter. Baker, Dunker, Brown, Nichols, and Garcia for Brush. Starting five out there for Holy Family. Dunker right in the lane, scoops it up off the glass and misses, and the ball is volleyballed right into the hands of Devlin Granberg. That's his third rebound. Into the front court is Summers. Left corner, wide open. Golter three is off the back of the rim. Randy Baker with his third rebound. Baker, long outlet towards Dunker. Dunker with the basketball, right of the lane, in the lane. Scoops it up and a foul as he misses. Let's see if Austin Brown committed that foul for Holy Family. And that's going to be Brown's second. That's the only way at this point, Jen. They've got to get some key players into foul trouble. It's Helbig, Golter, Summers. Granberg and Brown in there for Holy Family. The dunker free throws up and off the back of the rim. Well, and I think that they also need to make sure that if they are going to use the dribble drive and draw those fouls, they got to have guys moving in the right position to get the, the kick out. So they got to communicate on that. Second free throws up, and that rattles in. That was the first free throw by the B-Diggers. Holy Family's only taken two, 21 to 4. Dolcher with a basketball on the outside left. Lobs it cross court to Summers. Down low, Granberg, bodied up by Nichols. Kicks it straight away. Helbig fakes the three, puts up a 16-footer. Yes. Chris Helbig scores again. He's got six. Holy Family by 19, 23 to 4. I don't know if that was a travel or not, but it wasn't called. Here comes Garcia into the front court. Garcia on the outside left, swings it over to Brown. Brown at the top of the basketball, picks up the dribble, looking. Back on the left of Baker. Baker at the free throw line, right of the lane, and he's fouled on the floor. That's what the Bee Diggers are continuing to work on to try and get back in this with a foul committed by David Summers. Now that's his second. So they've got two players with two fouls, both starters, and Ryan Willis, who just nailed a three near the end of the first quarter, is back in the game. Well, and Randy Baker and Jeffrey Dunker are the two guys that are going to make that happen. That's it, yeah, there are the penetrators. And to throw it in will be Austin Garcia. Well, we've seen the Bee Digger offense struggle this year. By the way, that's a 17 foul, one and one. But never to this extreme. Well, yeah, I could say to this extreme. Remember early on in the year, that second half against Yuma when they scored yep. only five points. Free throw by Baker is good. Second free throw coming up for Randy Baker. Premier Farm Credit is the gold standard in ag lending. That is Premier Farm Credit. Another big sponsor, fine sponsor. Rush P. Digger Sports. They understand. They're passionate about agriculture and de dedicated to serving American good times and bad. Second free throw is in for Randy Baker. 
And here comes the Beat Digger Press. Under seven minutes to go, second quarter, 23 to six, Holy Family. And Jake Brown pressures Grandberg in the backcourt, but commits the foul. Rush has only committed well, five fouls now. 6.57 remaining, second quarter. We are at the top of the hour. I'm John Beltran with Jen Goodall. This is 10-10 KSIR. Rush, Fort Morgan, Greeley, and KSIR.com. Helbig in the front court, two on two, right of the lane. Going to have to kick it back out, does to Granberg. Granberg on the outside right to Willis, straight away to Helbig. On the left wing, here's Golter driving left baseline, scoops it up, and an offensive foul as he missed. Jacob Nichols took the contact, and Golter's not happy, but that's his second foul. You know what? And I watched that transition happen with Jacob Nichols. He came from almost the other side of the block to get to there and recover on a player. So he did a great job of getting in position. Well, that's three players with two fouls for Holy Family. Got to get them in foul trouble for the Bee Diggers to pull off what could be a miracle here against the number two seed. Dunker oh. then throws it away, and Tender for Garcia was cutting towards the baseline. Bee Diggers turn it over for a seventh time. Holy Family with three turnovers. Keep in mind the winner of this game plays tomorrow at 5.30. And the loser will play tomorrow morning. Helbig with the basketball straight away to Granberg. Outside left to Summers. Lobs it down low and turning and shooting his Kruitzer. And he misses an air ball. And then Dunker had it stolen away. And Willis banks and scores. He's got five. Holy family now with a 19-point lead, 25-6. to six. Brush had it there, but unfortunately... Did not secure the basketball. Garcia straight away backs up for a three. Good! Austin Garcia nails another triple. Rush down by 16, 25 to 9. 5.57 to go in the second. Straight away with the basketball is Willis. Now Summers wide open three. No good. And Jake Brown with a strong side rebound on the outlet to Nichols. Here comes Baker. Baker into the front court. B-Diggers looking for a run here. Baker left of the lane. Baker leans, shoots, scores off the glass for Randy Baker. He's got four points all in this quarter. Holy Family 25, Rush 11, Helbig foul by Dunker. And that is the 16th foul committed by the Bee Diggers. Jen, they just needed that first basket. They did, and I think, you know, with the determination that these guys have, I think that they're going to settle down and relax a little bit, let the game come to them. That's all they need to do. They can play with the Holy Family Tigers. Well, they spotted them 14. Well, yeah. It's now 25-11, a 14-point right. difference. And now they've got Holy Family in a little bit of foul trouble, so that works to their advantage as well. Helbig with a basketball against Garcia. With 5.24 to go, second quarter. Holy Family leads 25-11. Willis at the free throw line for Summers. Dribbles into the lane. Jump pass. Left corner. Helbig. Three in the air. Yes. Man, that, that guy's, guy's good. good. Yep. He is smooth. He's got nine. Holy Family back up by 17. The three from Needham's right wing is well short. He pulled the string. And Kruitzer grabs the rebound for the Tigers. And then we got a 30-second timeout called by head coach Pete Vieco of Holy Family. We'll keep it right here with 5.04 to go second quarter. And the B-Diggers trailing 28-11. The problem is, is when Holy Family decides to post up, they are hard to stop because of that height advantage. The B-Diggers are collapsing, and then you kick it out, and you've got the wide open three, and that's happened a couple of times. But, Jen, it's basically pick your poison. It is pick your poison, and I think, you know, if you're going to try to post up against the B-Diggers, then I think maybe we need to switch it and maybe front the post and see what happens that way. But that means that the backside communication has to happen on that rotation down from the top of the key to the block person on that backdoor cutter. That's what the Holy Family will eventually do. It is Kruitzer, Como, along with Granberg, Helbig, and David Summers for Holy Family. They'll have the basketball. For the beat diggers, Needens, Baker, Garcia, Rosenbrock, and Nichols. In the backcourt, the pass into Alex Como. Across the timeline, stripped by Garcia, fouled by Garcia. That'll be a second foul. That'll be the 17th foul, one and one situation. Como to the stripe. If he scores, that would be the seventh Tiger in the scoring column. And we've only played 11 minutes and two seconds. So they've got similar depth to the Bee Diggers, without question. Como's free throws in the air, and he made it. That's why I was saying earlier that Rush got the toughest draw. There's no doubt about it. Yes, they did. They got a two seed, which has played like a one seed and was 
ranked number one for most of the season until they lost twice at Jefferson Academy. Second free throws in and out. And the ball is rebounded by Rosenbrock, who throws it off of Kruitzer out of bounds. So the Beat Diggers do have possession of the basketball. And Rosenbrock to throw it in. Baker sets it up for Brush. Baker at the top, and he's fouled over there by Ryan Willis. So the Bee Diggers are going to extend this game. There's no question about it. They will shoot as many free throws as they can. Holy Family might have to back off a bit. Well, and Randy Baker is, is one of those players that is kind of salty when he can change speeds and stop on a dime and then go again right when the defense is trying to adjust. So he draws the fouls very well. And he made the free throw as well. He'll get a second. Baker is three out of three from the line. Holy Family 29, Brush 12. Second free throw for Randy Baker. That one's up and perfect. The B Diggers trail by 16, 29 13. In the backcourt with the basketball is Willis over to Granberg near the front court to Como. It's a two on one, pulling up his Helbig, 15 footer off the back of the rim. Missed, and the ball is knocked out of bounds after it was rebounded by Nick Kruitzer. And retaining possession is Holy Family. Helbig to trigger it in to the right of the basket. Helbig looking, looking, still looking. Lobs it outside right to Granberg. Granberg back out to Como, and Holy Family will spread it out with four and a half to go in the opening half. And up 29 to 13. Ryan Willis with the basketball just beyond the timeline on the high left to Granberg. Cross court to Como, picked up by Baker. B Diggers in a tight man to man right now. Dribbling to his right, jump pass in a right corner for Helbig. Down low for Kruitzer. And had the ball stripped away. Then he puts it up and in. He got it right back. It landed perfectly in Kretzer's hands. Holy Family back up by 18. 31 to 13. Outside left. Needens fakes the three. Left corner Garcia. Dribbles left baseline. Cut up by Como. Looking for a teammate. Down low bounce pass to Nichols. Double team. And then his bounce pass is intercepted by Helbig. Holy Family the other way. Helbig with the basketball. Dribbles by two. It's a five on three. Left of the lane. Jump pass down low. Como banks and he misses. And the rebound into the hands of Bryce Needens, his second. Needens for the B-Diggers into the front court. And he's fouled by Como. Como commits his first foul. And to the line is Bryce Needens. 3.37 left second quarter. Before your next mixer or feeder truck purchase, compare the MMI design craftsmanship and service. They continually outperform their competitors hands down. MMI International, 8-4-2-51-61. Two free throws. It's their 10 team foul. The first free throw is short. By Needham, second free throw upcoming. Austin Brown is back into the game for Holy Family. Second free throw coming up for the senior Bryce Needens. Needens bends, shoots. And he misses again front rim. The ball is batted into the hands of Randy Baker. He leans and misses off the back of the rim. And the ball is taken by Ryan Willis of Holy Family. Tigers the other way. Willis banks and scores. He went coast to coast. Rush is now down by 20. They had cut it to 14, but Holy Family is on an 8-2 run. 33-13. Needens across the timeline. Bounce pass. Right corner. Garcia, three in the air, is off the front of the rim. Baker grabs a rebound, tries to save it in, but he does to Brennan Lee of Holy Family. With the basketball is Helbig at the free throw line, in the lane, right corner. Willis, three in the air, good. Jen, I cannot watch any more of this. This is getting tough. And now I'm not even talking as a media member, but as a beat digger fan. They're down by 23, 36 to 13. Garcia right of the lane, leans, banks, misses, and the ball is batted out of bounds. And the ball goes over to Holy Family as Rosenbrock went for the rebound. Brown, Mickey, Cranston, and Dunker check into the game for Brush. It was 21-3 after one. The B-Diggers are fighting as hard as they can, but right now the basket has a lid on it. It does, and it's wide open for threes, raining in for the Tigers. Helbig with a basketball. Front court over there to Lee. Lee over to Helbig, batted away by Dunker, loose in the floor, picked up by Helbig. He leans and he throws up an air ball. And now we got a whistle and a foul. Let's see who committed that foul from behind. It's going to be on Holy Family. That'll be two free throws for whoever was fouled. Foul committed by Austin Brown. That's his third. 
Well, Brush is taking their free throws here in the second quarter. Now Ben Mickey will shoot ben two. Brush has more three-point field goals than two. They've got two threes and one two. And Mickey to shoot the two free throws for Brush. The first is in the air, and that is off the back of the rim. Back in the game for the Tigers, number 44, Nick Kretzer. Nick Kretzer is back into the game for Holy Family. Ben Mickey to attempt a second. Mickey bends, shoots. And misses front rim. And then Randy Baker tries to strip it away from Kretzer, and he does. Over to Jake Brown. Brown now to Dunker. Holy Family commits their four turnover. The ball is in. Off the glass. Jeffrey Dunker was able to score off the glass as he got the pass down low. 36-15. Left corner, wide open Willis. Three, he did it again. Wow. He's got ten points in the quarter. 39 to 15 and then the ball is thrown away by Baker intended for Mickey and that is turnover number 10 for the B diggers B diggers will pressure in the backcourt down by 24 with 206 to go in the second quarter in the backcourt with the basketball is Helbig in the front court to Lee baseball passes intercepted by Baker Baker with the basketball on the outside right of four on four Baker all the way leans banks and he missed it he put it up short Helbig with a rebound for Holy Family. Stolen and then the ball by. stolen by Dunker. Dunker misses. Dunker goes back up and scores. I mean, Dunker's got to play that defense. He's doing that right now. Dunker with five in the quarter. B-Diggers trail by 22. 39-17. Minute 37 to go second quarter. Helbig jump pass. Wide open. Kretzer banks and scores. As they beat the press easily. Holy Family scored 41 points in less than a half. Here's Cranston into the front court, bounce pass, outside right Baker, penetrates right baseline, floats it up, and he threw it off the bottom of the backboard. Chris Helbig has the rebound for Holy Family. On the bounce pass to Granberg, across the timeline, Granberg with the basketball, spins it back out to Helbig. Jen, how is this Holy Family team going to get beat in this tournament? They look unbeatable. Ken Denver looked unbeatable last year, and yet they lost to the finals to Pagosa Springs. But yet it boils down to that 14-0 start. It does, but I'm, I'm still looking at the no quit coming out of the beat diggers. No, no, so hopefully no. they're, they're going to... Yeah, they're fighting. I mean, they're playing hard. I mean, this is not a lack of effort. It's a, just a lack of performance in Holy Family hitting from everywhere. And they're just taking the air out of the ball right now. Kretzer with a basketball and fouled by Dunker. That'll be the 18th foul. Dunker commits his second one-and-one situation. But Ryan Willis has come off the bench, nailed three threes, and he... He's got 13 points leading all scores. He's almost outscoring Brush by himself. Nick Kretzer to the line for the Tigers. Kretzer to shoot one and maybe a second for Holy Family. The free throw is up and he bricked it. And Jake Brown goes high for the rebound. And then he's fouled in the backcourt by Brennan Lee. Lee commits his first foul. Jake Brown to the line. The B Diggers have attempted 10 free throws in the quarter. Unfortunately, they've only made five. They'll attempt two more here with Jake Number Brown at the strike. Jake Brown for the B Diggers to the line, shooting two. Yeah, when you have the opportunity to fr for free points, you can't pass them up. With the clock stopped. And the Brown free throws are round and good. Number 10, Alex Como. Into the game Alex the Como Tigers. replaces Brennan Lee. Second free throw coming up for Brown. He shoots and he scores. 41-19. Holy Family. Helbig with a basketball across the timeline. They can easily break the press. The Beat Diggers have made a, a few good defensive plays, but Holy Family's been sharp. On the outside left to Como. Down low, batted away, intended over there for Crutzer. Taken away by Mickey. Here's Baker the other way. He leans, he banks, and he misses. And the strong side rebound by Ryan Willis. With a basketball in the backcourt is now Helbig. 17 seconds to go. Dunker falls down. Helbig into the front court. Dribbles by two. Dunker's going to sag a little bit. 10 seconds to go. Helbig between his legs. Dribbles against Dunker. Back to his left. Bounce pass to Como. Como with three seconds to go. In the right corner. The Willis three is an air ball. Ben Mickey has got the rebound. And that is the end of the opening half. With the score. Holy Family. 41. Rush 19. Let's take a three minute break. Three minutes on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 
Let's head to the third quarter. Holy Family leading Brush in his 3A state quarterfinal, 41 to 19. Well, the B-Diggers did play a better second quarter, no doubt about that. They only got outscored 20 to 16. But with a number two seed, that's essentially a number one. Can't get off to this type of start. And that's what happened to the B-Diggers trailing 14 nothing Earlier today on the boys' side, it was the fourth seed Colorado Academy over the fifth seed Moffat County, 67-62. They'll play at 8.30 tomorrow against the winner of tonight's 8.30 game between Manitou Springs and Faith Christian. Moffat County plays tomorrow at 1.15 against the loser of that Manitou Faith Christian game. Colorado Springs Christian won by 20 over Denver Science and Technology, 69-49. They would play Holy Family if the Tigers hold on to this 22-point lead. If the B-Diggers could not rally, they would play at 10.15 a.m. right here on 10.10 and KSIR.com against Denver Science and Technology. It'll be Brown, Dunker, Needens, Baker, and Nichols for Brush. Summers, Brown, along with Helbig, Granberg, and Luke Golter for Holy Family. Tigers to throw it in. The B-Diggers are doing everything they can now to try and deny Holy Family winning their 23rd game of the season. Well, they're going to have to do that. As Holy Family's got the basketball. Helbig, bounce pass near the top over to Summers. Back to Helbig, left of the lane. Was stripped by Needens. Ball's loose in the floor. And there's a foul by Helbig in the backcourt as Dunker went to the ground, and that's going to be his second foul. Holy Family commits their eight turnovers. Well, the B-Diggers are starting out in a man-to-man, which I think is a wise decision. Yeah, they've got it. They've got to lay it all out right now. Yep, they cannot allow an open three to happen just by doing the zone. One run by Holy Family, this game will be over. The B-Diggers need about two or three big ones now. Needens with the basketball at the top, looking, swings it right side to Baker. Baker gets a pick from Needens, dribbles to his right, double team, bounce pass Needens, fakes a three, steps in, leans, shoots off the back of the rim. Austin Brown with a rebound for Holy Family, a second. Long outlet towards Summers, and then that baseball pass knocked out of bounds by Baker. Intended for Granberg, Holy Family retains possession. And to throw it in underneath the basket will be Helbig. Helbig at nine points in the opening half to Granberg. Back Screen out screener play. to Luke Golter. Bounce pass on the outside right to Summers. Guarded by Needens, looking down low. Golter was open, then he turns and banks and scores. Golter with seven. Jen, you talked about backdoor cuts, and that was a beauty there by Holy Family. 43-19, 7.05 to go third quarter. Brown on the high right at the free throw line, spinning right of the lane against Brown. Lost it, got it back, gets it back out to Needens. Needens dribbles the ball back out, double team. Over to Nichols, Nichols swings it to Dunker, banks and scores. To the left of the basket, Jeffrey Dunker now with seven. Leading the B-Diggers in the scoring column. Holy Family 43, brush 21. Golter in the left corner, back out to Helbig. Straight away to Granberg. On the outside right, Summers with a basketball, double team. Swings it right corner, Granberg, and he traveled. Holy Family commits their ninth. B-Diggers will have the basketball with Baker to throw it in. That was a good job by Jake Brown doing a little show and recover. He left a post person to go out and flash, came back to it, caused the travel. Dunker met by Helbig in the front court. Dribbles towards the right baseline. All the way, bounce pass to Brown. Little 10-footer left baseline off the back of the rim. And the ball is rebounded there by Nichols. And then nearly thrown away. It was thrown away. The B-Diggers commit their 11th. Here comes Summers the other way. Summers cross-court pass to Granberg in the left corner for Helbig. Fakes the three, steps in, swings it over to Summers. Straight away, shot is up and in. Little 15-footer for David Summers. He's got seven. Holy Family 45, brush 21, 6.05 to go in the third. Needens towards that right baseline. Double team picks up the dribble, looking, still looking. Bounce pass to Brown, right baseline, over to Dunker. Dunker had the ball stripped from behind by Brown, and it's saved over there by Summers, then poked away by Nichols, and it will stay with Holy Family as Brush commits their 12th turnover. I'd say a Brush has had a heck of a defensive season, but Holy Family, they are relentless on D. They're relentless on offense, too. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Golcher with a basketball on the outside left, picked up by Brown. Golcher looking. Bounce pass intended for Brown, intercepted by Jeffrey Dunker. Dunker was fouled, and no, wow. Boy, it looked like he was bodied up by Golcher. No whistle. Ball knocked out of bounds. Dunker clearly frustrated by the no call. He will throw it in three-quarters court. 
541 remaining third quarter. Holy Family 45, Brush 21. The inbounds pass to Nichols, hands it off to Dunker. Dunker at the top, dribbles to his right, gets a pick from Nichols, maintains the dribble towards that right corner. Cross court pass to Needens. Needens dribbles to his right, left of the lane, down low for Nichols. Nichols hooks it up and short, and then Dunker fell hard to the ground. And was he fouled on the floor? He was, and he's going to get up okay. I mean, Dunker is really laying his body out there. The foul was committed by Devlin Granberg. That'll be a second. Wow. I thought Dunker was going to be hurt seriously Ooh, there. I didn't know what he was going to land on. Well, he didn't brace his fall very right, well. He, he couldn't. Didn't. Bounce pass into Dunker off the inbounds pass over to Baker. Baker with the basketball on the outside right to Dunker. Dunker right baseline, right of the lane. Swings it over to Needens. Needens left wing three in the air. Good! Bryce Needens, who nailed a big triple last year against Faith Christian. Helping the B-Diggers win that game is scored. And then Dunker in the front court is on the floor with Helbig, and they tie up possession arrow B-Diggers. Bryce Needens and Jeffrey Dunker cause that turnover. Rush to within 21, 45, 24. And here comes the B-Digger killer in the opening half. Ryan Willis into the game for Austin Brown. And Needens to throw it in. Again, the B-Diggers just need a... A rally here in bits and pieces. Dunker across the timeline, behind his back, nearly stripped. Now dribbles uh, by Willis, then had the ball stripped. He gets it right back. Jump pass knocked away, but taken by Dunker. In the left corner, Needens fakes the three. Swings it left baseline. Brown, seven-footer, is short. And the ball is tipped right into the hands of Chris Helbig. The B-Diggers are having trouble making two in a row. They'll make one, then they can't make the next one. They can't get a run going. Granberg with a basketball. In the left corner to Golter, back out to Willis. Straight away to Helbig. On the outside right is Summers. Back out to Willis. Willis on the high left to Luke Golter, guarded by Brown. Golter dribbling. Jump pass in the right corner. Helbig, wide open three. It's no good. Randy Baker's got the rebound for the B-Diggers. His fifth. Baker in the backcourt. 4.17 to go third quarter. Brushed down by 21. Baker in the right corner. Dribbles right of the lane. Baseball pass. Left corner. Brown. Wide open three is up and off to the right. And the rebound is controlled over there by David Summers. That's his first rebound of the game. Long baseball pass to Golter, and he banks and scores. No whistle, even though there was contact. Golter now with nine, and Holy Family leads 47-24. Full timeout called by Holy Family. We'll keep it right here. And the B-Diggers are fighting so hard on offense that when they can't score in consecutive possessions, occasionally it will cost them on defense. It does cost them on defense, and looking at their body language right now, they are clearly frustrated. They're tight. I Nothing think they're actually getting tired. You know the energy they're expending out there yes. because they're going a lot on a well, When and you're and down by 20-plus points, you can't even rest for a millisecond. You've got to throw it all out there. You do, and, and the other thing is is that it's a mental tightness as well. They're not just, you know, swinging the ball like we've seen them, you know, throw the ball around and, and wait for that chance to happen. They don't have time on their side in order to do that, so they've got to score quick, get a steal, score quick. Accidents or illness can strike at any time, day or night, when they do every second counts. As a level three trauma center, Colorado Plains Medical Center can handle any type of emergency. Colorado Plains Medical Center, where expertise matters. Baker, Rosenbrock, Needens, Dunker, and Garcia for the bead diggers. Holy Family with a 47-24 lead with 4-0-1 to go in the third quarter. Break the huddle with Willis, Granberg, Summers, Helbig, and Luke Golter. And they will pressure in the backcourt. They know that Brush is not going away here. Inbounds pass to Dunker. Dunker back out to Baker, crosses the timeline. Baker motions the offense. On the outside right, swings it right corner for Garcia, dribbles to his left. Garcia jump pass to Rosenbrock, bounce pass to Dunker, and he banks, and he misses. There was contact, no whistle. Randberg with a rebound for Holy Family. And then we got contact in the backcourt. And a foul. Foul Foul committed by Jeffrey Dunker, his third. Granberg to throw it in. With 3.39 remaining in the third and brushed down 47-24. Granberg to throw it in. Lobs it in the backcourt to Golter. Golter with the basketball, met by Garcia. Dribbles across the timeline on the outside left. Hands it off over there to Ryan Willis. Check that. That's Summers. 
Summers looking for Willis, maintains the dribble, dribbles right of the lane, leans, banks, misses, and then the ball is knocked away by Helbig and out of bounds. And the ball is transitioned over to the Bee Diggers, and Trey Cranson will check into the game, and he will supplant Jeffrey Dunker. With 3.17 remaining in the third, and brushed down 47-24. Visit Morgan Community College online, morgancc.edu, or stop by the campus for a personal advising session. It'll get you on the right track and find out what options can help you. Imagine your possibilities, believe in yourself, and achieve your goals with Morgan Community College. And to throw it in, in the backcourt, will be Bryce Needens. Needens to Cranston, bounce pass over to Needens. Needens jump pass front court to Rosenbrock. It's a three on two momentarily. And then Baker threw a bounce pass that was kicked over there by Summers. Brush retains possession. And to trigger it in will be Garcia. Garcia lobs it near the top for Baker. Baker on the high right with the basketball. Maintains the dribble. Baker on the high right back out to Needens. Needens lobs it right baseline for Rosenbrock. Lost it, got it back. Rosenbrock fades, shoots off the back of the rim. And the ball is loose on the floor, still loose. And Cranson's got a cross-court pass to Baker. Left wing three. Good for Randy Baker. Baker now has nine in the game. The B-Diggers draw to within 20. 47-27, 2.39 to go in the third. Helbig jump pass, left corner. Three in the air is up, and that is in by Luke Golter. Holy Family can counterpunch very nicely. Seven in the quarter for Golter, 12 in the game. Back up by 23, 50 to 27. Baker to Needens on the right wing, dribbles right of the lane, in the lane. Jump pass to Cranston in the left quarter. Cranston with a basketball, spinning left baseline, double team back out to Rosenbrock. Picks up his dribble, Rosenbrock looking, bounce pass towards Cranston. Cranston swings it at the top for Needens, right through his hands, out of bounds. Rush commits their 12th turnover of the game, the fifth of the quarter. Jen, what you hate to see is this team has come so far, just like Holy Family, and then you get to a big game and it ends up being non-competitive. Yeah, I just hope that we can keep our poise and play a good competitive. Right, close it out as strong yep. as you can at yep. this point. Helping on the outside look for Como. Against Cranston, dribbles to his right, right of the lane. Como swings it right corner, wide open. Willis, three, good. That guy is a killer. Willis has done it again. He has got four triples in the game. 16 Holy Family by 26. That's their biggest lead with a minute 47 to go in the third. 53-27. Baker straight away. Bounce pass over to Needens. Swings it right baseline to Rosenbrock. He's trapped. Back out to Cranston. Right of the lane. Down low Garcia. Banks and scores. Austin Garcia. Timeout called by the B-Diggers. 30-second timeout. Brought to you by Greg Nolan at State Farm Insurance. Home auto life and health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. Give Greg Mullen the call. 842 845-55. 45-55. Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance. As brushes down 53-29 with 96 seconds to go in the third quarter. And holy family, they just don't make a mistake. They don't, and they've been killer from three-point land. I Those mean, threes nuts. were contested. Yeah, they were. They're just they're dead on. Yeah, they're making the beat diggers pay the price as soon as Baker hit the three. Galtra and Willis came right back. They shot those like layups. Yeah, it's it's pretty phenomenal how accurate they have been. But it still goes back to the opening five minutes of the game. Namely, the first four and a half minutes. Rush was down 14-0 before they scored their first points with 2.36 to go on an Austin Garcia three. Helbig for Holy Family with a basketball. Helbig into the front court, cut off by Baker. Jump pass over to Golter. Dribbles against Needens in the left corner. Jump pass to Brown. Cross court over to Como. Right baseline to Helbig. Helbig dribbles to his left. Swings it near the timeline to Willis. Back out to Golter. Golter against Needens. Back to his right. Spins by Needens on the outside left. Looking, still looking. Bounces it to Como. Straight away to Helbig. Approaching the one minute mark of the third. Holy Family retains a 24 point lead. Helbig on the outside right against Cranson. Helbig looking, spinning, picks up his dribble, bounce pass to Como, back out to Golter. Golter against Needens, now dribbles against Rosenbrock, left of the lane, had the ball stripped out of bounds. I think Holy Family might have touched it last. Nope, they're going to say it was off the bead diggers, although the officials weren't too sure at the beginning. Holy Family will retain possession. With 53.3 seconds remaining, Helbig to throw it in. Help side Austin, help side 
Helbig lobs it towards midcourt, picked up by Como. Como with a basketball, back out to Willis. Willis straight away on the outside left to Golter. Golter bounce pass near the timeline, taken by Austin Brown, back on the outside right to Helbig. Helbig guarded by Baker, 38 seconds to go, third quarter. Hands it back over there to Golter. Golter to his left, back out to Como, outside left to Willis. They're going to take the air out of the basketball for roughly the final minute and a half of the third quarter. Willis over to Brown, five on four, left corner, wide open, three, good, made by Luke Golter. He's got 10 points in the quarter, 15 in the game, and this is a well-oiled Holy Family machine. 56-29, 10 seconds to go in the third. Baker over to Rosenbrock with seven. Rosenbrock just beyond the timeline now with five. Baker with four. Into the lane, slashing, scooping it up, and he misses, and the ball is tipped out of bounds. And that is the end of quarter number three with the score. Holy Family, 56, brush 29. You are listening to the 2014 state quarterfinals from the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Holy Family with a 56-29 lead over Brush as we head to the fourth of this 3A state quarterfinal. And the Tigers have the basketball. Granberg into Chris Helbig out there with... Austin Brown, David Summers, and Luke Golter. Randy Baker defending Helbig. Now to Granberg, left baseline. Back out to Helbig. At the top for Brown on the outside, left to Granberg. Cranson, Baker, Rosenbrock, Needens, and Garcia for Brush. Helbig straight away on the outside, left for Summers. Summers with a basketball, dribbling against Needens, who commits the foul. That'll be his third. Only three total fouls were committed in the third quarter. his third. Holy Family's got eight three-pointers in the game. Three of them by Golter, and Ryan Willis has nailed four. Inbounds pass to be thrown by Helbig down low, wide open, and a layup up and in off the glass by Luke Golter. He found the seam. Golter now has 17 points in the game. Holy Family leads by 29, 58-29, with 7.22 to go. Baker with the basketball against David Summers in the right corner for Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock to his left. Back out to Baker. Baker at the top in the lane, stripped away. Ball is loose, and Brown tries to save it, cannot. It will stay with Holy Family. And Trey Cranston to throw it in. Cranston at the top for Garcia. Takes a long three. Good! Austin Garcia's had a pretty decent hand here. He's got 11 points in the game. The first beat digger in double figures. He's got three trifectas. Holy Family 58, Brush 32, 6.55 to go in the game. On the outside right is Summers, guarded by Needens, dribbles to his left, maintains the dribble, gets a pick from Brown, picks up the dribble. Left of the lane to Granberg, bounce pass all the way, layup is up and in by the cutting Luke Golter. They cannot stop him now. He's got 19. Holy Family up by 28. Garcia dribbles left baseline all the way. Scoops it up off the glass and in. Garcia Garcia with a strong move. Has scored five points in the quarter. Long baseball pass to Golter. Inside towards Brown. Knocked out of bounds by Rosenbrock. Holy Family retains possession with 6.28 to go. Leading by 26. You see, they counter brush baskets very well. They do. It's been basically a basket. It's two for three. Well, that's why. Most of the game. Exactly. Straight away, Brown with a basketball. Back out to Groundberg on the high left. Feeds it back out to Summers. Holy Family, I'm sure at some point, will clear the bench. In the left corner with a basketball is Golter. Guarded by Garcia. Kicks it back out to Granberg. Straight away for Austin Brown. Brown against Rosenbrock. On the high left to Granberg. Looking down low. Feeds it to Golter. Golter against Garcia. Bounce pass to Granberg. Back out to Brown. Brown kicks it left corner. Wide open three. Contested pretty well, though. Missed. And Randy Baker gets the rebound. Yeah, closing on it nicely was Garcia. Then the beat diggers throw it away in the front court. Turnover number 13. Here comes Helbig the other way. Back on the outside right. It's Golter. Golter in the right corner looking down low. Golter back out to Granberg. 5.39 to go in the game. Brushes down 60-34. to 34. Right corner Brown with a basketball. Poked by Needens, but he's got it right back. Swings it at the top for Summers. Summers looking for a teammate, dribbles to his left. Summers left of the lane, leans from 12, and it's no good. Randy Baker has grabbed a 7-3 rebound for Brush. Baker into the front court. Baker met by Summers near the top of the high right though. Garcia, long three, is off the front of the rim. And the rebound is controlled by Chris Helbig, his fourth board. 
And then a shot is up. Luke Gulter scored. Boy, that was, I put my head down for a second, and it was yeah, a long baseball quick, pass. Yeah, that was a 30-second. Called by Holy Family. Luke Gulter at six in the quarter. 16 and a half and 21 in the game. 5.08 to go. Holy Family is up by 28, 62-34. It's not even their biggest lead of the game. They were by 29 moments ago. Well, and I just think at this point, they got to look for tomorrow. I mean, you're still in the consolation bracket, so do the little things right now. Keep your poise. Keep your heads about you. And put on, do what you do as a beat digger. Well, keep in mind that starting in 2008 with the beat digger girls, every brush team, boys or girls, that has advanced to the state tournament has won at least a game. They've never gone two and out. Now, they've only won one quarterfinal game. That was the Brush Boys last year. The girls lost in 08 and lost in 09 to Holy Family. Brush Boys lost in 2010 in the quarterfinals. And then they came back, and they were able to make it to the Constellation Championship game where they lost a close one to Ken Denver. Here comes Baker. Bounce pass to Rosenbrock. Back out to Baker. Baker at the free throw line. Spinning, leaning, shooting, and he misses in and out. And the rebound into the hands of Austin Brown is third. There's the outlet to Helbig. Helbig into the front court, guarded by Brown. Dribbles by Brown, right baseline, all the way. Cross court pass, left corner, Summers three is no good. The tip is up and missed, and a foul as Golcher went to the ground. That probably is going to be two free throws because he was tipping and trying to put it up at the same time off the rebound, and Rosenbrock commits the foul. Rosenbrock first. And Golter to shoot two. Free throws good. And now it's a 30-point lead. If he makes the second free throw, it's at 63-34. Second free throw upcoming for Luke Golter. With 4.45 to go from Plune Arena. That's in. Here comes Baker the other way for the B Diggers. Brush had a 16 point second quarter. They were outscored 15 to 10 in the third. Here's Nichols in a lane. Left baseline dunker. Fade shoots air ball. And the ball is stolen by Brown off the rebound by Holy Family. Helbig had it. And Brown banks and scores. Holy Family commits a turnover. That is their 11th. And coming the other way is Alex Como for Holy Family. Back out, and the ball is knocked out of bounds by Brown, intended there for Como. And it will be Holy Family basketball with 4.10 to go in the game. They lead by 28, 64 36. Ryan Willis towards the top, picks up his dribble, looking, swings it right side to Golcher, guarded by Brown. Golcher with a basketball, still looking, still looking, dribbles, and then he traveled. Holy Family unofficially with their 12th turnover of the game. The Bee Diggers with 14. But this game has been over for a long time. Holy Family led 14 to nothing. And the Bee Diggers could get no closer than 11 after Austin Garcia had a three-pointer. Rosenbrock to Brown right of the lane. Banks and he misses. Ooh, and good cut though. Then the rebound is controlled by Nick Kreutzer. Helbig pressured in the backcourt. Dribbles by two, by three. Bounce pass to Kreutzer. Right corner to Willis, back out to Helbig. Holy Family is handling the basketball extremely well despite the beat digger pressure. With the basketball is Golcher wide open to Helbig. He banks and scores in midair as he caught the basketball. He's got 11. Holy Family leads by 30. Dunker at the free throw line, and then he throws it away into the hands of Willis. Willis all the way. Will dunk it with two hands. Oh, boy, that adds a little bit of insult to injury. And the Bee Diggers call a timeout brought to you by Greg Mullen of State Farm Insurance. Home model life and health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. 842-4555. And keep in mind, that was a dunk by a 6'2 player. Not exactly a guy who's 6'5 or 6'6. And Ryan Willis showed some hops there. He did, and I believe that he is a high jumper for Gotta Holy be. Family. I mean, I'm just I'm trying to remember track meets and what, what kids I've seen and which ones I haven't, but I, I do believe he is one of the high jumpers they have. Holy Family leads 68-36. to 
Jen, you just take your breath here. There's really nothing you can add to it. I think the score speaks for itself. It doesn't. And, you know, you got to give kudos to Holy Family. They had business in mind, and they took it to us. We didn't, well, you know, I mean, that's a very well-oiled machine. I think with three minutes and 11 seconds to go, right now, you're just not getting outplayed. Quite frankly, as talented as Brush is, you're losing to a more talented team. Right. And that's the way sports is sometimes. All we can do is put our best foot forward. Dunker to throw it in. In the backcourt. Over to Randy Baker. Back to Dunker. Dunker with a basketball. Dunker right of the lane. And then Dunker pushed off. An offensive foul. Check it. Jacob Nichols away from the ball, setting the screen with his second foul. The Bee Diggers commit their 16 turnover of the game. And now we have three minutes to go. Alex Como pressured in the backcourt. And then he's fouled. That'll be the 15 foul committed by Brush. Randy Baker. Fouls on the Big Diggers, number 24. Commits his first. Baker, his first. Team fifth. Only family retains possession. Willow Coffee, Tea and Smoothies, and G Sweet Bakery offers cookies, muffins, and sweetbreads made fresh daily. Open early, two, six days a week at 921 Edison Street and Brush. Pair them with your favorite coffees, lattes, or smoothie flavors. Dunker commits a foul on Ryan Willis. That'll be the 16th foul. And now you fear that the B-Diggers diggers are getting reckless to the point that they're going to send Holy Family to the line when you want to play solid defense, but it's going to be a larger deficit as Dunker will check out and Cranston into the game. Well, and there's Bryce no need to foul. I mean, well, just play good defense. Fair. Right. Tim Canati checks in for Holy Family. They also bring in Joe Golter. So Holy Family's clearing the bench. And Joe Golter to throw it in. Two minutes and 52 seconds to go. The pass into Como. Now to Canati. Canati back out to Brennan Lee. Lee against Baker. Bounce pass on the outside left. Back out to Golter. Left corner to Canati. Over to Golter. Pressured by Brown. Now to Como. Holy Family's not in any hurry to take a shot unless it's a layup. Canati pressured by Needens. Lost the basketball. Got it back. Back out to Lee. Lee looking, spinning, dribbling against Needens. Lee with a basketball bounce pass to Kanadi. It's not nearly tied up by Baker. Kanadi puts it up and he misses. And then it's put back up and in by Alex Como. Holy Family now leads 70 to 36 with 2.09 to go in the game. Needens left of the lane. He's fouled. Fouled by Como. That'll only be the third team foul. Holy Family's defense. Much more disciplined after all those fouls in the opening half. It was, and they've held the beat diggers in check. We try to drive, we try to get threes, open looks, and we've had open looks. We just haven't made them. Cranston to throw it in. Lobs it towards the top. Needens takes a three, and he's fouled as he misses. Rice Needens to shoot three. Foul is committed by Matt Griggs, who just stepped into the game. Bryce Needens to the line for the Bee Diggers, shooting three. The Bee Diggers will drop to 19-6. But they'll go for their 20th win tomorrow. And the free throw by Needens is up and off the back of the rim. These are the first free throws taken by the Bee Diggers in the second half. They actually attempted 12 in the second quarter. Second free throws up, and that's better, that's good. Free throw number three coming up for Bryce Needens. With 2.06 to go in the game. That one's in the air and that one's in. Well, the seniors don't want their last game to be tomorrow, so they're going to come out strong against Denver Science and Technology. Kanadi with a basketball, jump pass to Griggs, overhead pass to Lee. Lee dribbling to his left. Over to Kanadi. Kanadi single team by Needens, nearly knocked away. And then Kanadi tied up by Needens. Oh, and got to watch out over there. Separate those players. A lot of contact. And was that a foul called over there along the baseline? It was, apparently, on Needens. And Needens commits his fourth. One and one situation for Tim Kanadi. Team seven. 
And now the Beedickers clear the bench. Grayson Simmons, Cameron Alexander, Clay Shaver. Austin Garcia remains in the game. Uh, Rosenbrock in the game as well. And Kanadi to shoot the one and one for Holy Family. The free throw is up, and that's in and out. And that's a foul over the back by Nick Crutzer. That's the team's fifth. Crutzer with his first personal. Fouls on the Tigers, number 44. And B. Digger Nick basketball. Crutzer, his first team fifth. With a minute 46 to go, and for Shaver, Alexander, and Simmons, they'll get experience here at the state tournament. Garcia to Simmons. Simmons back out to Alexander. Dribbles to his left. Alexander near that left corner for Rosenbrock. Back out to Simmons. Simmons in the high left to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock dribbles left baseline. Cut off over there by Kritzer. Kicks it back out to Simmons. Simmons near the timeline to Garcia. Garcia between his legs. Right of the lane. And he's fouled as he drove towards the basket. Foul was committed by Brennan Lee. That'll be his second. His second. And, and it was on the floor with a minute 17 to go in the game. Garcia to throw it in right corner for Shaver. Back out to Rosenbrock on the outside right to Garcia. Fakes the three, dribbles to his left, into the lane as runners up and in for Austin Garcia. Austin Garcia for two. Garcia's got 13 points in the game. He leads the B Diggers. 70 to 40, Holy Family with a lead with 57 seconds to go in the game. Joe Golter just across midcourt, picked up by Simmons. Jump pass to Lee. Lee on the outside right to Tim Kanati. Back out to Griggs, Holy Family will just hold the basketball here. Lee on the high left, swings it back out to Kanati. We're down to 36 seconds to go in the game. Golter just beyond midcourt. As Simmons will sag. Golter with 25 seconds to go. Jump pass over to Lee. Lee with the basketball. Dribbles to his left against Clay Shaver. Picks up the dribble. Jump pass to Kanati. 14 seconds to go. Kanati dribbles to his right. Back out to Golter. Bounce pass to Kanati. With five seconds remaining near the timeline to Lee. And the Holy Family Tigers will advance to the 3A state semifinals. As they defeat the Brush P Diggers tonight by a score of 70 to 40. Let's take a three minute break. We'll come back with a recap in three minutes on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran, Jen Goodall back from the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs in this 3A state quarterfinal. Holy Family defeats Brush 70 to 40. P Digger post game show brought to you by Buildings by Design. Most important thing. Start a build design project is finding the right company to build it. They could do it at Buildings by Design for a free bid called Pat Walter at Buildings by Design. Check them out on the web at Buildings by Design. Also, our video sponsor for the regional or for the state wrestling championships. That's Buildings by Design. The Bay Diggers lose this game 70 to 40, down 21 to 3 after 1, 41 to 19 at the break. Outscored 15 to 10 in the third and 14 to 11 in the fourth. The Bay Diggers were led by Austin Garcia's 15 points, nine for Randy Baker, seven in the game for Jeffrey Dunker, and four for Jake Brown. Holy Family had three in double figures. Luke Golter had 23, but he had 18 in the second half. So he did virtually nothing in the first half when Holy Family was already in deep control of the game. 18 points for Ryan Willis, 11 for Chris Helbig. Seven points of the game for David Summers, their second leading scorer throughout the regular season. Nick Crutzer at four, three for Alex Como and two apiece for Austin Brown and Devlin Granberg. The Bee Diggers were out rebounded unofficially 26 21. Randy Baker had seven rebounds for Brush and Chris Helbig had five rebounds for Holy Family, but they had four players with at least four rebounds. That tells you that everybody's crashing the boards. When you're that balanced, even on the rebounding edge, the Bee Diggers 9 out of 15 for the free throw line. 60% Holy Family only took eight free throws and made four. They might have had a better percentage from three-point range, 
yeah. than they did from I'm, a stationary 15-footer. I'm going to say for sure on that one. The Bay Diggers committed 16 turnovers unofficially to 12 for Holy Family. And, Jen, all you can do is rebound tomorrow morning with a 10-15 game against Denver Science and Technology. Well, and we've seen that from the Beat Diggers before. When they've had a loss, they've come right back fighting. So that's that's definitely what we want to see from the boys. All right, so that essentially does it. Not much that we can really talk about here. I can only imagine what head coach Ken Garcia is telling his team right now because we don't think it was certainly not a lack of effort. No, absolutely not. Just a performance, not. but you lost to a better team today. Well, I mean, when you start off, four, it was, what, 11-0 before yeah, we made 14 our 14-0, and then Austin Garcia scored a three. with 2.36 to right. go in the opening quarter. And you're in the state quarterfinal, and it takes you nearly four and a half minutes to score. And you're playing a great team that is playing their A game. Right, and, and we had it open looks. Over. It wasn't like there wasn't opportunities. We just didn't make the shots this time around and you're going to have games like that and sometimes you just have to battle back and I thought the boys handled themselves pretty well. You can always follow us on Twitter and Facebook at KSIR Sports and at B106 quarter by quarter updates not only of these basketball games but of of course of football during the 2013 portion of the season all the baseball and even plenty of uh, wrestling results as well that we brought you throughout the regional and state championships. So once again, the Beat Diggers will be in action tomorrow morning, 10-15, right here on 10-10 and KSLYR.com against Denver Science and Technology. They lost to Colorado Springs Christian by a 69-49 count. There are still two more games to be played today. Pagosa Springs girls, the second seed against the seventh seed Manitou Springs. That'll start in about six minutes. And then at 8.30, the Manitou Springs boys will be taking on Faith Christian. Outstanding job as always by our sound engineer and producer Rose Condes. For Jen Goodall, I'm John Beltran. The final score of this 3A state quarterfinal. Holy Family, 70, Rush 40. And you heard the game right here on 1010 KSIR and on the World Wide Web at KSIR.com.